What is going on internet? Another video coming at you from Redskins Rant. Hail to the Redskins. Before I get started on this video and the content, please hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, you get no videos like this all the time, and share this to all your Redskins friends or Washington football team friends so they can also be informed on what's going on with the team. So, the Washington football team played the Cleveland Browns yesterday. And, I mean, if you watched my last few videos, I did not do a prediction video on this, and Anyone who is waiting for one, <clears throat> I apologize. I had a wedding this weekend. I did not have days off this week at all to do a video. If I had done a video, it would have been at like 3 in the morning, um, exhausted, and I just didn't want to do anything, the wrong thing and do the whatever. So I just did not do one. Um, but this game, um, a lot of things happen in this game. I'm going to go over every, every single aspect of it. So first thing I'm going to say is if you've watched my last few videos, I have been kind of been sticking up for Haskins. I think that Haskins has been a product of a lot of things where he can't set his feet, the offensive line is not holding up, um, a combination of all those things. I think this is the week where I can't make that excuse. I don't think all of it falls on Haskins, and I'll explain why, but I do believe that a large portion of this falls on Haskins. Haskins, looking at his numbers, he actually didn't have, I didn't think, a horrible game wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible. 21-37, 224. It looked like he was actually on pace to have like a really, you know, benchmark day, 300 plus yards. Um, but he just, it, it, when it went south, it went south quick and just couldn't recover. So here's what happened. If you didn't know, Washington was leading in the first quarter, 7 nothing. Cleveland bounces back and gets 17 straight points. There was interceptions thrown. Yada, yada, yada. But here's what I want to mainly talk about is the fact that it's not some, it's, it's, here's where it's a combination of Haskins like 90% and the rest of the defense is like 10. And here's where I'm going to go over this. Well, first off, let me throw out there that Young and Ionitis, Young and Ionitis both left the game midway through the first or, or first half, basically. Um, injured. One had a groin, one had some kind of arm injury. I don't think they're both out long term. I think they're good to go next week. But it was just like a, a random like injury that happened this week. So, here's what happened. Haskins got a touchdown. Well, we got a touchdown. We up 7 nothing, And this happened three times in this game. I could say the same scenario, same sentence I'm about to say. And it, it can apply to three different scenarios. And that's this is what cost us the game. really was. There was a penalty that put us behind the sticks. That's comma. Um, Haskins pushed the issue and turned it over. Comma. And Cleveland came on and scored within four plays. That happened three times in this game. Three times did the Washington football team turn the ball over. Or we have our quarterback. Let me phrase that. Our quarterback turned the ball over. And all three of them led to plays within seconds. Now. The 90% Haskins. Um, he needs to have better composure. He needs to not think he has to do it by himself. He needs to have rely on his teammates and trust that his teammates are going to get open and going to be in the right spot. And trust that his defense, if he can't get a first down, <clears throat> trust that his defense can go on the field and um, you know hold their own and play defense. That's what he needs to do. That's where he needs to throw the ball away. He needs to not take the risky throws because then he's always throws them high. So on and so forth. He had three turnovers, four turnovers this game. A lot of turnovers this game. Probably could add more, but he had almost five turnovers this game. And if it wasn't for Don, or, uh, Isaiah Wright, he would have had four interceptions in this game. So, first part of this, obviously, is Haskins. You know, we got behind the... I can tell you exactly what happened. We got a... One was a holding penalty. We're back first and 20. And then two plays later, he throws a pick. Another one was an offensive pass interference called on um, ha on uh, ter ter Terry McLaurin, which was bullshit. Um, if you watch the play, it's complete bullcrap. There's no extension. There's not nothing that is – it's ticky-tack at best. I mean, it, it, in, in flag football, it might be a penalty, but not in the NFL. That's not a penalty. It's not enough to cause anything. Okay? Um, and 
I don't remember the third one. I, I mean, there was three, and they're all three pretty much the same scenario. But basically, he forced the issue. Is, is what happened three times. Once the team was behind the sticks, he forced the issue three different times. And then, here's where the 10% of the defense comes in. The defense needs to be better. Defense needs to come in better composed. The second we turn the ball over, defense comes in, and they're just bam, bam, bam. Cleveland scores a touchdown like four plays. Three times that happened. Now, I'm just going to say this. I think our defense has some pretty good players on it, has some studs. There's no reason, no reason. If they came out and grinded out a possession, I could get on. I can. I could be okay with that. I can be okay with them grinding out a possession. But no, they came on and bam, 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 touchdown. So you, it's not just Haskins. I mean, it's one thing if Haskins turns the ball over. But our defense still has to play defense. If our defense goes out there and then gives up a play, a touchdown in four plays, no matter where the ball is, that's a problem. So it's not just Haskins. And this happened literally three different times. I literally, if you follow me on Twitter, I should really should bring up my Twitter right now, but I'm not going to. And just explain that, or show that I literally turned to my wife after the, uh, at, we already had two interceptions at this point. And we were winning in the second half. It was a close game in the second half. I literally turned to my wife and said, how much do you want to bet? It was, this was immediately after the pass interference call on, um, on McLaurin. I said, how much do you want to bet? And he's going to go, go up here and he's going to turn the ball over. He's going to throw an interception right here. It wasn't two plays later, interception. Now, you could you, anyone who's trying to make excuses, I'm not trying to make excuses for Haskins. I'm just being honest. Anyone who tries to make excuses for Haskins be like, oh, well, it shouldn't have been called a pass interference. You know you're not right, but you know you got to handle adversity better. First and 20, and all of a sudden now you, you want to handle, you, you, you want to like cave under adversity. I mean, we, you were, we were down in this game at some point. You didn't cave then. Why is it as soon as we're like 20, 10 yards behind the sticks, that's what did it? And it happened three times. The same um, MO happened three different times. Okay? And it actually happened one other time, and that led to the strip sack. That pretty much was like sealed the game. So, so I, I, I am blaming Haskins. He, he's 90% of the blame on this. He did not play well. I mean, he played well at points. He played well at points where he played well enough that we could have won if he wasn't for the turnovers. If it wasn't for the turnovers, but in the same breath, when it comes to those turnovers, the defense has to go out and play defense. They didn't do that. They went out, gave up a really quick touchdown, three different times, and for why is that? Why is that a thing? If it was like after being on the field for like ten times, that happened twice in the second quarter. So you can't fucking tell me you're tired. If you're tired in the second quarter, we have bigger problems than than than, than anything, and we're not going to win any more games this year. Okay, you can't tell me you're tired. You need to, the Washington football team, it's not just Haskins, it's not just the defense, it's the whole group. Okay, I would say there's some guys are excluded from this because they went out and played, and I think some players played well, and I'll give them some credit later. But there, this is all, there's, as a team, there is no composure. There was no composure. That when you throw a turnover and the rest of the defense goes out and sucks, that's not the quarterback's fault. That's not the defense's fault. That's a team issue. That's a team issue where you're um, you're immediately just, you know, uh, dragging your ass because in mopey because a, a fucking turnover happened. And that's exactly what happened in this game. And I will argue, I will vehemently argue that with anyone. You're not going to sit there and tell me that, uh, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, Haskins wasn't a problem. When I'm saying he's not, he was 90% of the problem today. But the other 10%, a defense needs to go out and get stops. That's what their job is. And after a turnover in three, after three turnovers, bang, bang, bang. I actually, if you want to get technical, after four turnovers, because they got a field goal at the end. So after all four turnovers, they gave up 24 points on, on, on like right after the turnovers. Okay, your job as a defense is to stop the other team from scoring or minimize that. And you didn't do that. I'm not taking the blame off Haskins. Again, I don't want to reiterate. But I'm saying that everyone wants to blame Haskins and have no blame to the defense, which is supposed to be a group of studs, or our secondary, which was supposed to be better because we had Kendall Fuller. Uh, there's just, uh, it's an attitude issue. And I'm not sitting here looking to have, like, Ron Rivera, like, you know, analyze whether he should be a coach or not. But he, he, there's things that he's doing that I don't agree with. And I know we're just we're pretty much tanking this year and just looking for the future, and I get that. But 
You can look for the future and look for a winning culture and a winning future and not have a mentality where as soon as something goes south, the team just freaking caves. Now, granted, after they cave and give those touchdowns, they bounce back. They get stops. But as soon as we had a turnover, oh, now it's an excuse for us to suck dick and be bad at football right now. So, um, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and highlight some people. And here's here's where I'm going to get into some really issues that I had throughout the game. If you follow me on Twitter, you're going to know exactly what I'm going with. So if you don't know my Twitter handle, it's Redskins Rancher. Uh, at Redskins, capital R, Redskins, capital R, Rancher. And what I do is throughout the game, and I'll point out things that are bothering me when it comes to me watching a football game. So first thing that bothered me is why do we follow good plays, bad plays after good plays? We will call, We will get momentum going. We like first possession we had first possession, great momentum. We had great momentum. We just got like 30 yards, and then we followed up by having a deep shot that wasn't even close, followed by a run on second and ten, and now we're third and twelve. This is the same fucking bullshit that we have with um, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, we were consistently on first down, take a shot deep, he'd overthrow it by 15 yards. Second down, hand the ball off. Third down. Third and ten, or what? Or third and ele- third and eleven, if, if it was a lost yard, or like third and nine, and he throw like a six yard out, and like, oh well, I did my part. Guys didn't catch a ball, or the guy didn't run for it, and then we just turn and punt the ball. That's not the best use for success. I do like how they did some things def- offensively. They got guys involved. They got certain guys the ball handed to them. Um, like for example, like Antonio Gandy Golden got like a one run for twenty two yards, which is pretty cool. Isaiah Wright did pretty had one. Uh, Terry McLaurin had one, so and so forth. So it was a mixture, a mixed bag of a lot of things. We had over 100 yards as a team, which is good. However, why is Antonio Gibson only getting the ball nine times? You fucking got rid of Adrian Peterson because you wanted to hand him the ball and make him the bell cow back. We're not playing other running backs. We're playing kids that got five carries and Barber got three. So that's 17 total carries that we had throughout our running backs. Why is Antonio Gibson not getting 15 carries a game? The whole point of hanging on to him and get rid of Peterson was to move on from Peterson and to establish this guy as our new next like good running back. That was the point. Why is he only getting the ball nine times a game? Or he should be getting the ball minimum 15 touches on the uh, running the ball. Now he did get a lot of touches when he got a couple catches. I'll give him that. He got a handful of catches. But running the ball, he should have at least 15 carries a game. Okay? Right now, he's averaging 5.4 yards a carry. In this game, he did. I don't know what he's doing over the season. Let me look it over the season. Okay. He's averaging 4.5 yards a carry, which is not bad. And your kid's averaging 4.5 yards a carry. Okay? So, in the course of four, three games, we played three games so far. We have barely run the ball. We haven't run the ball 50 times. Well, we have. We've run the ball more than 50 times. But not 50 times with our main running back. So running back-wise, we've ran the ball 50, 68. 68 times. Okay? I'm sorry. Not going to cut it with me. Okay? 68 times over three games. So that's what? Like three, 30, 33 and a half, 23 and a half. Or 23 per game and one game is like 22. Not enough for me personally. I don't think that's enough. And the only reason we have that many is because Barber had like 20 car- or like 18 carries the first game. Okay, Antonio Gibson is getting about roughly 10 a game. He needs to be getting 15. He needs to be getting 15. That's personal opinion. He's getting a lot of touchdowns. I'll give him that. But he needs to be getting 15 a game for us to have success running the ball with him. He really, he really does. I'm not, I'm, I'm not stressing that. He really needs to have the ball more often and run the ball more often, at least 15 times a game. Establish the run. The best thing you can do for a young quarterback like Haskins is establish the run. And give him a chance to, um, and give him a chance to run the ball and, and build some momentum. For all you know, he's gonna the, the the tenth run this this tenth run could have been one he busted for forty. You don't know that, okay? You don't know that, okay? And and J.D. McKissick is actually not doing bad. He only had five for fifteen in this game, but now on the average, he's averaging all, over four yards of carry as well. We're just not trying to establish the run, the, the run attack. We're trying too much for the passing game. Um, I I did say I do think there's some nice things they were they they got in Antonio Golden going with a with a run. 
They got Isaiah Wright going. I actually like Isaiah Wright. Isaiah looked really good today, I thought. Um, so on and so forth. There's a lot of good things that they did today. And it's, it's overshadowed by some really questionable play calling, bad time management, a quarterback play, and then a defense that just came in and sucked the, sucked the life out of the whole team. McLaurin, as usual, McLaurin is the bright spot. Now, that's something they actually did, did as well. They went, for some reason, they went away from McLaurin. He got, like, all of his catches. A lot of his catches were in, like, the first half, first quarter, uh, or second quarter. And, or, no, first quarter. And then they never went back to him. He only had four receptions. How the hell do you have Terry McLaurin on your team, and you only hit, he only gets the ball four times? That's ridiculous. Dontrell Inman had three. Um, what else? Isaiah Wright had four. That wasn't too bad. Logan Thomas had four. But how do you not go to McLaurin more than four times? I mean, it says eight targets. I get that. But he he gets open so easily. It's, that's ridiculous. It's, he gets open way easier than most than, than, than anyone else. And when you actually try to get him open, he, he gets open very well. It's not even that difficult. It's so freaking frustrating. So, um, fumbles. Don't try to that back. We got that one. Okay. I'm not going over that. I've already talked about... Um, Haskins and his fumbles and things like that. Okay, so who's our defensive standouts? I mean, John Allen did very well today. He did look good. Dante Sweat got a sack. That was good, too. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't think anyone else really played really good on defense. Um, our secondary sucks. I'm just going to say it. We can't cover anyone. We did good the first week because we had no fear. Now, all of a sudden, we're playing a bunch of pussies. I don't want to get in people's faces. And I, I don't understand it. Um, I, I'm not going to get too much into that on this video, but we are just playing like a bunch of fucking sissies who do not want to get in and play someone like no get in someone's face. First week we had no fear. We, we had nothing to lose. Now that we've won something. We have something to lose. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Seriously. It, it, it's just really frustrating to me. Team stats. Let's look over these real quick. Um, both have the same amount of first downs. So like, like I said, what killed us was turnovers. Third down conversions, not great on our end. Uh, actually, not bad on our end, better than theirs. Um, I, like I said, our defense didn't play. If you look at our stat line, you're going to look at our stat line and say, oh, the defense gave up 158 yards rushing. Okay. A lot of those yards rushing came after the defense of ours shut down the run early. They had the, they had the um, Cleveland Browns very one-dimensional. Washington's defense had them one-dimensional. Like I said, there's one specific thing that happened that caused the Cleveland Browns to get all the momentum. It's an inter it's a it's a penalty followed by a turnover, and then they scored in like four plays, and they got that in bulk, and they got it done so fast. And it, 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 it I've never seen a team score that fast to be honest with you. And you can't sit there and say a time of possession. It wasn't that much tilted towards Cleveland. So it just they just wore our defense down. Is the best way to put it. Our defense very early took the run out of the game, and then because of the opportunities that the defense has or the, our our offense provided them because of turnovers, they got the ball back in positions where they were able to run the ball even though we had the lead and things like that. If we did just not turn the ball over and we kept them one dimensional, we had this game on wrap because they could not block our defensive line. Our defense line was getting there, um, but after a while of running the ball, they had to play off to like make sure they can keep everything in front of them and slow the running game. And then you just you just can move the ball at ease. And Baker Mayfield's way too accurate a passer to let that to to give him give anyone any space next to you. Total play is 62. This is a really eerie how accurate how like right on point both of these guys are. We had more offensive yards and we lost. That doesn't happen very often in the Redskins. We don't have more offensive yards than people. Yards for play, we had more. Passing yards, we had more. Running yards, we did not have more. They didn't have that any more than us though, so that's that's fine. Uh, penalties, uh, they had more penalties than us. This is, a, this is crazy. You should look at these stats and say, like, oh, Washington should have won. But if you look at this and then these two right here, that's what cost us the game. So what am I trying to wrap up with this with? Washington did not play bad. The offensive line actually think played pretty good. Offensive receivers, I thought, played pretty good. Haskins did not play good. Okay, he did not play very good. By the way, I had to leave like every Redskin group I had. I'm in. I'm in like I was in like four or five Washington Redskin fan groups online, and I can't be in them. There's so much fucking negativity, so much fucking whining, 
throughout the course of a football game. I have a friend of mine, I think I mentioned it last video, his name's John. He texts me during the game and just whines about how bad the team is. I'm like, dude, shut up. Like, seriously, watch the game. We can talk about it afterwards. But the second this guy has an incomplete pass, everyone's on Facebook or Twitter, oh, got to get rid of Haskins. What are we going to do with it right now? I mean, as much as I like Alex Smith, Alex Smith isn't going to make us any better. He's not, as ac he's not as good a thrower as Haskins. And do you really want to have a situation where we put Alex Smith out there, he breaks his leg again, and then we have to go back to a quarterback we just benched? How horrible a situation is that going to be? Or we always go Kyle Allen, I guess, if everyone wants to go that route. But everyone needs to just calm their shit. I don't – okay, so let me rehash this here. Offense, offensive line didn't do bad. They had a couple – gave a couple sacks – but for the most part, they gave Haskins a clean pocket. That's why this game's so frustrating, because Haskins wasn't being like if he was being like rushed like nine or ten times, or he was like being pressed the entire game, then I can understand your point and your frustration. But he wasn't. Um, this is more on Haskins. The offensive line played great. Running backs didn't play bad. I just think they need to commit to the run a little bit more. Um, three. Um, the receiving core wasn't too bad. I thought there were some. Tough passes, but I think there was a couple of them that might have been missed. But all in all, I don't think it would have been anything different in the grand scheme of things. Um, defense. Defensive line didn't do bad until the end of the game when they just got ran on. And let's be fair here. If we're going to look and say who has the best one-two tandem at running back in the NFL, it's the, it's the Cleveland freaking Browns. Okay, They have two starting running backs on their team. They could take either one of them off their team and still have a strong running game. Both of them are starters in this league. One happened. To, the the one is on their team by circumstance. The other one they drafted. Okay, I think it's Nick Chubb. Yeah, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb's a good, one of the best running backs in the league right now. He really is. And then the Browns' offensive line is only going to get better. Uh, but our defensive line, I didn't think, do bad. Our secondary for a while looked good. We had a couple almost like coverage sacks that were like out there, but. After, like, they just started, after, like, the turnovers, the defense, the secondary just decided they just didn't want to play football anymore. Um, yeah, so I'm going to reiterate my point one more time. Yes, Haskins gets 90% of the blame because he did not play with composure. He tried to push the issue himself. He tried to win it by himself and force throws where he can't force, force throws. And it led to interceptions. Those interceptions led to very quick touchdowns. It's a snowball effect that started with Haskins but ended with our defense. And I think they're both to blame, but I think 90% of it does go on Haskins. If he doesn't try the force the issue, we don't end up in situations where our defense has to or uh, gets scored on in four plays. So I think there's a combination of both those things. Play calling sucked, in my opinion, in most parts. I think they try to get some people involved, but just try to run more power running game. And I think we'll have a lot more success. I guess that's because a team like this uh, wear down their defense rather than try to like just throw so much that I think that's the biggest. I think that might have been the biggest flaw in the game is you're trying to pass the ball so much that you're just putting too much on Haskins maybe. But I think you could have ran the ball about ten more times and taken some of the throws out of Haskins, and that would have been like the easily the, the difference in the game because it could if with those ten passes we could have minimized our turnovers. Um, could have minimized their good field position, whatever the case may be. What else do I want to go over? I don't agree with Ron on not calling timeouts. I think we need to start. He needs to start practicing time management in games. He's going to get to a game this year where he needs to have good time management, and he has a chance to win. If he's playing the fucking Giants in two weeks, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, we're playing the fucking Giants in three weeks, and he has the opportunity. To beat the Giants by having a good fourth quarter, uh, two-minute drill, touchdown. You do that. And we need to be practicing those things, those principles now. Use your games wisely. You don't have a lot of practice. You didn't have preseason. You got to use this time wisely. And I'm, I'm, I, I keep hearing this excuse you didn't want to get guys injured. Okay, then don't play anyone. If you're that worried about guys getting injured, don't play anyone. This is football. People are going to get injured. It's going to happen. Okay. But I'd rather them get injured right now where they can recover than, than play it safe and then not get, like, the experience. And the next year they suck, but they're not injured. You know what I mean? So I'm, I've rambled on for about 25 minutes. This is uh, Redskins rant. This is JD. 
Um, I'm going to do a video that breaks down um, their matchup against the uh, Ravens. Watch this come out and actually play good against the Ravens. That would piss me off. I would rather beat the Browns and lose to the Ravens. Why? Because they're supposed to beat the Browns. They, they're not good. This is a game that could have been had if it wasn't for our, our stupid mistakes. Okay? Sorry. I'm only ranting and I cuss a lot in this video. Don't take it personal. I'm not a cusser. It's just frustrating how a combination of watching the game. I was exhausted yesterday too. I, I came back from a wedding and I was just beat. I was exhausted. I the night before, uh, like sun, Saturday night, spent the last five hours like cleaning up a wedding. Got home, like got the better on one, and then um, I had jaw crash, something fierce. It just was, it was sore all over. I drank water all day, but somehow I was cramping. It was the worst. And then I woke up, had to unpack the car still, drove home, and then got sat down for I, I wasn't able to like, jump up and celebrate when we got touchdowns. It was really it was really a tiring day. So it's a combination of all that and this game like really frustrates me. I almost broke my TV too. I threw a hat at it. But uh, I want to thank everyone for listening. This is Redskins Rant. Hail to the Redskins. Uh, follow me on Twitter. It's Redskins Rant. I actually have an Instagram, James underscore plank underscore eight eight. Um, I share a bunch of stuff, Washington football team, a bunch of my nerd stuff I like. Uh, the picture is my face on Batman's body. Uh, see ya. Uh, hail to the Redskins. See ya.